this wonderful guidance that Paul delivered through Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. Now this is in your bulletin, in the passage that we're working with. It is a wonderful teaching, and it's so primary to our journey as spiritual truth students, as we reveal the underlying wisdom behind each of these fruits. And today is no exception. We are going to look at the pair, the pair of kindness. Now, I realized when I was researching this talk that I don't use the word kindness very often. It doesn't even come up in my thoughts very often as like a, one of my vocabulary words. I know what kindness is, but it, as I more and more uncovered the power of kindness, I have adopted it as a very important word in my journey. Now, I did, uh, I, I always look up a whole bunch of quotes and stuff for the talk. Now, I'm not going to use this in the talk, but I have to use it just to share it. Henry James said, three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. The third is to be kind. Pretty darn important and why it gets an honored place in our cornucopia. Kindness. Turning to the wisdom of Mahatma Gandhi, who we know with his conviction of compassion, kindness, and nonviolence, transformed a very nation. And he said, the simplest acts of kindness are by far more powerful than a thousand heads bowing in prayer. Now, we know how powerful prayer is. So even a simple act of kindness is more powerful. That's quite a fruit. Now, I, in, in looking at this, we know prayer changes us. Every prayer changes us. It doesn't change God. But kindness and giving kindness is action. It changes the world. That's very powerful. So we can adopt kindness as a powerful tool in our toolbox to awaken kindness in our thought and being. Now, I go back. This wisdom transcends all human knowledge. It's, it's in every spiritual tradition. Lao Tzu says, kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. And kindness in giving creates love. So the words we use are very important. Words are powerful. And when we use words of kindness, it's going to create kindness. Similarly, when we think words of kindness, it is going to produce 
kind God. A thought held in mind produces after it kind and love. We know that love is the very basis of our unity knowing of God. That unconditional love that transcends all interaction, all things, and is always ready to give us everything that we need. So this wisdom about kindness and how we can use it in our thought, in our word, and how we operate in the world, we've got some operating instructions. Now that's rare. We don't often get operating instructions. In fact, most of the time when you get an operation manual with something, you can't understand what it says anyway. That's just what I've noticed. But when we get clear operating instructions, then we can use them to make our lives better, to realize truth and wisdom that can actually make us more available to handle whatever is going to happen in our lives. Which brings us to this next quote, Khalil Gibran a great author. He says, I have learned silence from the talkative, toleration from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. It's strange. I'm ungrateful to those teachers. It's so human for us to on a knee-jerk reaction when someone is really talkative to us or intolerant or very unkind to see them as the enemy, not as a great teacher. And yet, in those situations, if we were to look across the street and see an interaction where someone's just going, and we see the other person pulling in, backing away. Someone's very talkative, and someone's very silent. Afraid to say anything because they might say something louder and more, but probably just saying the same thing over and over again, just a little louder. That's my experience. So, we can learn in these situations a kernel of truth that each of these situations gives us an awareness of there's a way to approach things. Maybe rather than, if, if, it, if it is my practice when I'm angry to yell, really loud, which I have to say I used to do that, because my example growing up was my father was a rageaholic. Got angry, it's like, get really loud. Oh, well, that's what anger is, so that's what I did too. But I realized that's abusive, and it doesn't make me feel good at all. But we can learn to adopt a practice where we're kind to ourselves. And from that kindness to ourselves, we're able to be more acceptant or allow them to be just who they are and you can love them in spite of their behavior. You don't have to like it, but we can have a much more peaceful way of living together if we accept people just as they are. The Dalai Lama, a great spiritual leader, who, when we think of the Dalai Lama, I think of the Dalai Lama as someone who examples a compassionate heart. Someone who's, who's, who truly lives and breathes this message. Now he says here, and I love this, this is my simple religion. There's no need for temples. 
There's no need for a complicated philosophy. Our own brain, our own heart is our temple. And the philosophy is kindness. So what if our true practice is kindness? Being kind to our loved ones being kind to our neighbors, being kind to our community. And if we can adopt a practice of acting in kindness, even a simple act of kindness, what effect can we have on creating the world we want to see? One that's filled with love and peace and justice wisdom, and wholeness, serenity. And it comes from this very action of kindness. Giving a smile, holding a door. There's so many things we can do to bring about a world we want to live in. And what I think the Dalai Lama is really saying here is the kindness begins right here with our brain, our thoughts, our words, our heart. And boy, am I grateful for this journey. I've learned so much and I have so much more to learn on being a compassionate heart on being a lover of everyone and everything. And I can see, I can vision seeing every, what I used to see as a troubled situation, as a great teacher. So that my heart goes, oh, thank you for being my teacher in this. That's a kind way of dealing with our classroom and our are learning. This is in every sacred text. And turning to this, uh, 1 Corinthians, the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, is the chapter about love in the Bible. And simply put here, love is patient. Love. How well do we love ourselves? How often during the day do we turn or look in the mirror or, or say to ourselves, I'm worthy of my own kindness. I love myself just the way I am. It's kind of black belt spirituality, but it's it's the best thing we can do because love begins at home. Now, I'm going to close this talk with this quote from the author Roy T. Bennett who talks about acts of kindness. Acts of kindness, a random act of kindness, no matter how small, can make a tremendous impact on someone else's life. And when we can have this kind of an effect on other people's lives, but kindness uplifts. If kindness is a brand of love, then when we give kindness, we're sharing love. Now, I had a dear friend in Maui that I used to go to lunch with. And as we were you know, paying for our bill, she'd call the waiter over and say, now, here's my credit card, and I want you to pay for, oh, that table over there, for those four people there. She'd just pick a table at random, and the waiter would go take her credit card and charge off, and then we'd leave. And those people at that table, oh, we're ready for a check. Oh, your bill's been paid. Now, if I was in a restaurant, 
and someone had said, your bill's been paid, I'd say, thank you, God. I love being taken out to lunch. And being taken out to lunch by God is really good. But we can do this by sharing a smile and a wave to people we don't even know. When we see that, doesn't it lift our day? That simple acknowledgement, I'm here. Everyone wants to be acknowledged. No matter how young or how old. Look for simple ways you can just a random act of kindness. A kind of kindness that doesn't need any remuneration or praise or acknowledgement. When I was, uh, lived in Berkeley, we would walk through Berkeley for a walk every day. And what I'd love to do is go, there was a toy store that had a bulk bin of the most prized marbles I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I would buy a whole bunch of marbles and on my walk I'd just drop a marble. Knowing that some kid is going to come along and go, oh, look what I found. That would have made the world of difference to me as a child. Because somebody else had the thought of a random act of kindness to lift my day. So let kindness be a word, a thought that you incorporate in your day and see how you can bring kindness into the world. Thank you. Namaste. on the water